Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are reading the Manual for Teachers. This is part one, Who Are God's Teachers? I would like to read this little bookmark I have from Pathways of Light. I remember who I am. I accept that I am love. I release all judgments of others and know that they are doing the best they can. I keep my life simple and follow my highest path. I stay in tune with the highest source within me and let it guide my ways. I am gentle and kind with myself and others. I pace myself with one step at a time. I know the perfect circumstances present themselves for my perfect continued growth. I am love. I am joy, I am peace, and so it is. Who are God's teachers? Today I'll read paragraph one and two of this section. A teacher of God is anyone who chooses to be one. His qualifications consist solely in this. Somehow, somewhere he made a deliberate choice in which he did not see his interests as apart from someone else's. Once he has done that, his road is established and his direction is sure. One decision has ensured the direction he will take from then on. A light has entered the darkness. And we'll go down and read six, uh, footnote 6. John 1, five. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Back to the text, it may be a single light, but it is enough. He has entered an agreement with God, even if he does not yet believe in him. He has become a bringer of salvation. He has become a teacher of God. Paragraph 2. They come from all over the world. They come from all religions and from no religion. They are the ones who have answered. The call is universal. And we'll go down and read footnote 7. The call is capitalized here because it seems to refer to the Holy Spirit, as it often does in the Course. See, for instance, chapter 5, section 2. He, the Holy Spirit, is the call to return. And then chapter 5, section 3. The Holy Spirit is the call to awake and be glad. It goes on all the time and everywhere. It calls for teachers to speak for it and redeem the world. Many hear it, but few will answer. Footnote 8, Matthew 22:14. For many are called, but few are chosen. This Bible verse implies that God is highly selective when it comes to how many are chosen. First, he calls many, but not all. Second, he decides that only few who answer the call are worthy. In the original parable, a man who answers the wedding invitation is thrown out because he is not suitably attired. In the Courses version, God is not selective at all. His call goes out to everyone. The text explicitly says, All are called. Instead, all of the rejection comes from the human end. First, not all are open to hearing God's call. Second, of the many who do hear, only a few are willing to answer. But it is all a matter of time. Everyone will answer in the end. But the end can be a long, long way off. It is because of this that the plan of the teachers was established. We'll go ahead and read footnote 9. Given that the plan of the world hinges on God's teachers, I'm sorry, given that the salvation of the world hinges on God's teachers, what is called here the plan of the teachers is another way of talking about the plan for the salvation of the world. Their function is to save time. Each one begins as a single light, but with the call at its center, it is a light that cannot be limited. 
and each one saves a thousand years of time as the world judges it. Footnote 10. In other words, each teacher of God shortens the length of the world's journey to salvation by a thousand years or more. Most likely the words thousand years are simply a way of referring to a great deal of time. To the call itself, time has no meaning. So that must be you. Thank you so much for joining with me in this beautiful half of part one, Who Are God's Teachers? And I will pick up the reading tomorrow. Thank you for joining with me. I love you. Have a beautiful day.